Hi, I'm Bob Canote, and on this episode of the Cam Chaos Chronicles, I'm going to show you how I set the crankshaft bearings up on a Jaguar V12. It's kind of a big deal. Dang it. So why is it such a big deal to set the bearings up right? Well, what you're trying to do is you're trying to get the clearance between the crankshaft and the bearings where the manufacturer wants it to be. And uh, the problem is that if the bearings are too tight, they can generate a lot more friction, cause the bearing to fail. Uh, if the clearance is too big, what can happen is your flow through the bearings will increase, pressure will drop, uh, and uh, it's just not gonna work out in terms of uh, the longevity of the bearing. Specifically related to the Jaguar V12, particularly the bypass cooling system sort of scenario in the early HEs, if the bearing clearance is too big, what happens is the flow through the bearing is too great, the bypass closes to maintain pressure at the crankshaft, and that means there's less oil that goes into the cooler, which means the oil gets hot and it kills the engine. As I said, it's kind of a big deal. So how do we do it? Let's take a look. The first thing we're gonna do is we're going to install the uh, main bearing caps in their appropriate location. And I'm not gonna show you how to do that because we've already done a video on block inspection. And this is one of the things that, that uh, you would do initially in order to figure out whether the block is usable or not. But we just now got this block back from being a line honed. And what we're gonna do then is we're going to, as I said, put all these main bearing caps on, torque them down the way that they would be um, when we bolt the crankshaft in position along with the bearings and see what that bore diameter is. And then we're going to record it on our special form. And this is my special form. You can see this is where I record the measurements that we were just taking, the main bearing bore diameter of the block. Now, those of you who are familiar with this measurement here would note that it should be between 3.1665 and 3.1667. And you can see that we're over half a thousand of an inch big on some of these measurements, which would be a little disquieting. However, when we get down to the end here, I think that we're gonna find that uh, we may actually need that. This is my experience in the past. Now, the next thing we're gonna do is we're going to take <clears throat> the bearing halves. And we're gonna actually measure the thickness of the top shell and the bottom shell and we will record it in these positions right here. Now what that will give us, main bearing bore diameter minus the top bearing thickness minus the bottom bearing thickness will give you the main bearing diameter. And I will record those measurements on the main bearing shells. I'll explain why in a little bit. So as you can see, I've taken the main bearing bore diameter of the block, subtracted the two uh, bearing shell thicknesses, and what that gives me then is what the bearing diameter will be, 2.9936 in this case. And you notice that there is a fairly significant amount of variability here. And that is a result of the variability in the bores and the two bearing shells. You can see we've got a uh, minimum dimension of 2.9927 and the biggest of 2.9938. So we're looking at 11 ten thousandths of an inch or just a little bit over a thousandth of an inch between the smallest and the biggest that we have here. There is a specification for the bearing diameter. And I'm not particularly concerned about that at this point. What I'm concerned about 
is the main bearing clearance. And what that is dependent on is main journal diameter subtracted from the main bearing diameter. Now, there's always going to be a little bit of variability in the crankshaft journals as well. So when you get all the variabilities figured out here and uh, calculated out, um, you come up with your actual number. And what the main bearing clearance is, is the gap in between the bearing and the crankshaft journal. And the specification for that in the shop manual is 0.0015 to 0.003. So there's a, a 15 ten thousandths of an inch difference or range that, that this measurement, the main bearing clearance, can fall in. But you notice that I've only got um, about a half a thousandth of an inch range here. And that's because it's really important. Um, I'm going to do another video sometime on the, uh, the early... 5.7 liter V12 uh, lubrication cooling system. And it's very heavily dependent upon this number right here. And what I do is I stuff the, uh, the clearances in between the bottom half of the range. I think it's really important in order to maintain uh, adequate flow at the cooler. So what I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna take my micrometer which someday I'm going to do a video on how to actually read one of these, and I'm going to measure the journals at the crankshaft. Okay, so what we got here is our bearing diameter, which we calculated earlier. Then we wrote down our main journal diameters once we determined what they were. And then we subtracted the journal diameter from the bearing diameter, and we come up with our clearances. And as you can see, we've got some issues here. Uh, remember, we want to be between 0 0.0015 and 0 0.002. That's that range is about three quarters the thickness of a human hair, which is pretty fine. So 0.19, good, too big, too big, too big. Here we got one that's a little small. We need to close that up somehow, but everything else looks reasonably good at this point. So what do we do? Well, what we can do is we can look around here and see where we're, see where we're really tight, and we got one here. But if you look here, it's uh, we could actually take and find a bearing here like this one, except that the thrust bearing and the rear bearing are the same bearing. They're bigger uh, width-wise. So our choices are between five, six, and two and three. Um, and so in order to close that up, we got to take a thin bearing like point 00867 and replace it with a thicker bearing. And down here, we got thicker bearings. So what we could do is we could take one of these and replace that. And what that would do here is that would take this tight clearance and if we moved it up here, that would bring us, well, we're looking at three ten thousandths of an inch. So that would bring us to 0 0.0019. So by switching those two bearings, we can bring both of these specs back into what we want up here. Now, the issue is that <clears throat> we can't do that with all of them. So what I've got here is a set of new old stock Vanderbilt bearings. And if you look at all these numbers, you can see the thickness of these is incredibly uniform. I love these old bearings if you can find them. Kind of hard to find. If you compare the numbers with what we've got here on the... Uh, um, with the new bearings, uh, you can see there's quite a bit of variation. Up here, smallest is 0 0.087, biggest is 0 0.083, so less than a half a thousandth of, a, of an inch difference in the whole set here. So uh, we're going to use these. And you can see that um, 
for example, <clears throat> right here. Oh, well, actually, we already solved that problem. However, now you can see that the problem we've got here <clears throat> is a little different. Uh, that one's out a little bit. Um, because those are pretty skinny, what we could do is we could take one of our bearings up here. And now these are separate engines, by the way. These are for two different clients. This is why I like to do two engines at a time, is because with the variability of these new bearings, I can actually, you know, mix and match between the two engines and come up with clearances that are real good. So if I look at this one right here, we're one ten thousandth of an inch over, which, you know, I'd take that if I have to. But what I can do is I can take one of these 0.087s up here and I could put it in the place of this one right here, 0.0868, and I could uh, get back a couple of 10 thousandths here so that'd be 0 0.009. And so by doing that, between the two sets that I've got for the uh, both of the engines that I'm doing and this one set of new old stock Vandervelles, I'm gonna be able to get all these bearings within that 15 ten thousandths to two thousandths range. It takes some time to do this. And truthfully, if we were to look at the whole spec, 0 0.0015 to 0 0.003, as, as stated in the service manual, every single uh, clearance that we've actually got here on both of these engines would be serviceable according to that. But as I said earlier, I wanna keep it within a tighter range than that because it really does affect how the lubrication cooling system works. Now you may have noticed that there's a column here for something called Plastic Age. And Plastic Age is a product that you can actually use to do the same sorts of things that we just did. It's not quite as accurate and you can only use it accurately under certain circumstances. What you do is you take and you cut off a length of this, one of these scales right here, which I have done. You open it up, and on the inside, you have this very thin piece of plastic, and it's of a very specific diameter. And when you place this in between two parts and you torque, in our case, connecting rod and uh, main bearing cap to the proper torque, what this does is it squashes it flat. And then what you do is you take the envelope and it's got graduations on it. This side is metric, this side is SAE, and the smaller the clearance is between the bearings, the wider the plastic gauge is gonna be squashed. And of course, the bigger the clearance, the less it's going to be squashed. And you know, it's fairly accurate, but again, you ha it has its limitations. And this comes in various thicknesses as well. This is from 1,000 to 3,000. There's some from three to five and so forth. So what I do is I use this to back up the measurements that I end up with here for bearing clearances. I just do that so that I avoid making mistakes. And then what you do once you get done taking your measurement is you take some sort of a plastic or other soft uh, tool and scrape it off. And then you go ahead and Torque everything up and you're done. So, we're gonna put these bad boys together now. Well, that's how I do it. Now, if you like these kinds of videos, like, subscribe, maybe leave some comments down below so we can know what we can do to do what we do better. And we'll see you the next time on the Camp Chaos Chronicle.